So it's a it's a little humor that I thought uh, is is worth uh, sharing. Basically, it starts off with uh, the client and then the business analyst and then the developer and then eventually the code turns out to be very different from what the client wanted. Lah. So in, in this same scenario, maybe say this is us. You now we MO, MOE officer, then we tell our interns, our tell our vendors what we want. Then eventually the vendor will get their own developer to develop it. And then eventually what turns out to be quite different from what uh, we specify. So this is a, a constant struggle for any development process where what is articulated in Word document or PowerPoint as storyboards usually doesn't come out as, as what we have specified. So let's take a look at the conventional development method. Like usually it takes a long time. People start with storyboard and then there were all this discussion and the final document eventually gets improved. Then when, when we get the, the final interactive, usually the, the code inside the interactive is a black box. Then uh, officers like us will have no idea whether it's recyclable. Then things just uh, isn't as as good as it could, could be la, Because when uh, feedback comes to us from SLS, then the student will give us some feedback. Typically, I, if I'm not wrong, uh, there will be very little means of improving the resource after that. Okay, so in this internet age, uh, is it possible that there could be better ways? I mean. Times have already moved on so much. Now there's even ChatGPT. I uh, know Metaverse was supposed to be the next in thing, but uh, it didn't take off. Instead, it was this uh, conversational chatbot that has seemed to swept the world already. So why can't educators be simulation designers? Because I've been doing it for a while and I have uh, reaped a lot of benefits from creating uh, simulation that students and, and teachers uh, love to use. So why can't we take lessons from what I have uh, distilled over these many years and see whether we can somehow create an alternative uh, development track uh, where uh, simulations can be or interactive can be made in-house and using a toolkit that we are familiar with. Okay, There are several advantages. So for example, in the EJSS library, uh, there are all these source code that are actually can be copied and modified. So it actually shortens the development process. So you do not need to come up with an elaborate uh, PowerPoint, Word document, and then, uh, then from, from there, then ask the vendor or the intern to build. Things can actually be a lot faster if there is already an existing prototype, then we speak off from the prototype and then we get the interns or the vendor to, to improve further on. Okay, this is a list of uh, free tools that I have curated after consulting with ChatGPT. Uh, so easy JavaScript simulation authoring toolkit is my first choice. There are all, all these other free authoring toolkit, but each has its own strength and weakness. I, I leave it to you as a, as a list that uh, you don't just come for my brown bag and just to hear me talk about uh, you know how I've been doing things. But actually, there's actually a, a, a repertoire of tools that I think some of us could be using. JoJibra, I think it's quite popular with math, Desmo. These last three are actually used by our interns in MOE. Oh. So I just let you know, like this GDevelop was uh, used by SCAB people. Uh, SCAB also talk, talk to MOE, right? So when they talk to us, they actually shared that their interns, their SCAB also use this thing called a GDevelop. Uh, this is used by MOE CBDD. Okay, so I'd like to share something which is, it, it is difficult to swallow that actually interactive can be done in, in seven days. Uh, when I make the interactive for folks in, in uh, CPDD and, and, and ETD, they tend to be terribly taken by shock that such a, such a complex thing can be done in such a short time. So uh, typically, if you are interested to create using interactives, it doesn't really take... Uh, a very long time. Maybe for animations, for video, yes, you can you can take a slightly longer time. But for interactives, I have actually come up with a very short way, lah, which is basically you just need to discuss with me, give me a, a simple storyboard. Then we will work with the RA or the or the temp staff. And then the temp staff can work on it. So every day I will I will talk to the intern, then we will share the files. Then 
uh, okay, if, if you believe in like more theoretical stuff, these are some of the design principles that I have used with Andy. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. So code refactoring, you may not have to worry about it uh, because JavaScript is actually quite efficient. Okay. So you just have to take note that uh, typically uh, the officer, which is probably you or me, we will work very closely using EJSS to develop the, the interactive. We will address the bugs and uh, unexpected behaviors are overcome. Then when this is eventually released to the users, we'll eventually, when this is in SLS, we'll get feedback. And with this feedback, actually improve the resource rather quickly because uh, EJSS is actually modular. Um, what you can think of it as uh, I can just simply enable and disable a particular page and then that code becomes frozen or enabled, you know, depending on how you, you want to toggle between enable or disable it. So it's, it's very easy. Uh, when, when, of course, when I say easy, it's also with a caveat. Like it's what is easy to me is also quite difficult. So, but in a general sense, like I'm just speaking in general sense, it is rather easier like, than to work on the Visual Code Studio. Okay. So uh, I just like to highlight that even the, the source code that was developed 20 years ago continue to be editable. Okay, so um, I just like to talk about some of these resources I've made over the past uh, three months. Okay, the first one, okay, it launches to SLS. Okay, I just let me try to open it up to, to full screen. Uh, let me open up to full screen, uh, easier for everyone to see. Okay, so you can see that when I design this, this is a, you know, it's, it's a slider that controls. Straight away, you can see this is something more manageable. Like you can see a pencil, you can see something that resembles real life. And this actually controls you can probably play with it. You can see that it's probably something to do with the liquid that's being uh, stored in the beaker. Okay, then this is probably a paper. It's not all white and then it becomes very difficult for the user to figure out what's happening. Okay, so now if I were to drop something, click on it. Okay, these are like solvents, I think. Uh, so you drop it, then it, it creates a dot, a dye, a color on the starting line. And you can create something here. Okay, if you put it on the same spot, I have scripted it to have some detection of collision. This will prevent uh, the fake physics from or the fixed phenomena from being uh, depicted. Like, because when the spot are in the same spot, the, the diffusion of the, the travel of the dye will become different. So it's better to mimic it as separate dots. Then you can put your unknown. Okay, as a comparison with the two samples. Then you can click play. You can even toggle the, the height la, so that you can actually have a very precise measurement of where the dots end up. Now you observe the dots. Huh? Okay, It is actually moving up gradually, almost like the real experiment. Okay, Now if you have gotten this uh, built by non-professionals like intern who have no guidance, no usage of EJSS, Typically, the dots just suddenly appear, you know, suddenly appear, suddenly appear. It doesn't move gradually. The, the simple reason I can give of such a phenomena is because when you script it, when you create it using a non-scientific tool, the non-scientific way to build it is to just make it appear. It's, it's a very natural thing. But once you use a scientific tool like EJSS, then we start to think in terms of equations. We start thinking of ordinary differential equations. Then the, the movement becomes just the dy dx of it, like, you know, like the differential of the position with time. So everything becomes very scientific and the chance of it becoming something useful, more understandable to your audience is higher. Okay, let me go back to the PowerPoint. Okay, so you can see that I have con I have designed it such that all the panels are on the top. Okay, it is realistic and accurate. Uh, it is designed with the user in mind. And there's a lot of uh, iteration that I do. And these things actually happen very quickly. So that, that is the reason why it can be done in uh, seven days. Okay. Just try to give you a general sense first. If you are interested in a more technical workshop, then you just approach me or, or Madam Lee. Then we can uh, arrange a more targeted workshop where we go through the hands-on something probably that will spend three days or something that you can create your own stuff 
or maybe you can guide we can guide the interns to build stuff with your uh, storyboard. Okay, this thing called the evolution is your for those of us who are math trained, this is like your ordinary differential equation. So it's like d y over dt. I simplify for everyone now. Uh, d y over dt. Then this is the velocity of the of the of the dot. So there are many dots. So you, what you see is all the different dots will all move up uh, at a certain different speed. All can be controlled using. It just need to be very mathematical and very programmatic uh, in your very systematic in your thinking. Then we can actually program this like mathematics. It's a this is basically a mathematics equation uh, oh. So it's nothing beyond our reach lah. Uh. Because I understand if you were to ask intern to build this using Visual Code Studio, a code editor, it is very daunting because to see all the lines of code, it becomes very confusing for anybody, for most people. But once I can, I can represent it as a math equation, then the math teacher will say, the math officer will say, oh, wow, this one I can handle, not too difficult. Maybe the other things I can get my intern to help me, but I can define the mathematics equation for my intern to use. You will notice that some of this pencil and, and clip art, we can actually support SVG, uh, PNG, and, and, and G. Uh, so it introduces realism because if you look at all the other, I'm not going to show you interns, past interns work, lah, but you can imagine lah, they, are, they are, don't have pencil, they don't have paper clip. It's just rectangles, circle. It's very difficult for anybody to, to, to understand. Which is why officers in, in, in HQ always criticize, always give comments. The interactive not very intuitive because you are using a, a non-scientific tool to build this. So it is a, it is a problem la, that perhaps using a more scientific tool can, can address. Okay, this is another interactive that I help uh, the bio folks make. Uh, I'm just going to click on it and show you. Okay. So it could be uh, interactive. So let me just launch it to full screen. So this is obeying the storyboard. So EJSS can do a pop-up. So we can have a, a, a instruction for the student. Then after that, the officer say, okay, how nice if let's say this thing actually talks about this object. Then when you click on it, it disappears. Okay, it disappears. It disappears because these are the rulers. I created this checkbox for, for the officer because even though it's not in the storyboard, but I take ownership of the, the design because I see if it's all cluttered with words and there's no mechanism for it to, to show and, and hide, then it becomes very difficult for the student to use. So I designed this. Okay, The storyboard given to me, maybe I just show you something uh, more interesting. Uh, so I, I can vary the, the slider of the distance of the lamp. Okay, I can collect the data. Okay, okay Because it's, it's going to take uh, a very long time because it's very far away. So I can I design a speed up button for an officer. Okay. So after one minute, then I will pop up a data. Then you can collect the data here. Then you can slide on to something else. Maybe I just slide something nearer. Okay. It's, so you know, it's, it's speeding up, uh, speeding up. So this actually is not fair a comparison. Uh. You actually do slowly for the student, but I created a, a, a speed up button. So what you see is just the bubbles appearing but actually it appears slowly then it floats up okay let me just collect a few data so you can see that with with the toolkit that i'm using it becomes we can actually design very innovative solutions that the student don't actually need to you know, do pen paper and then you know they got to copy all the data actually we can have a graphical representation for them to figure out the, the phenomena then once you click okay there'll be a trend line that is drawn i mean those of us who i mean this is sciences branch line math math teachers they they love curve fitting so when the officer saw this they say i cannot have a curve fit line because the data is a bit uh you cannot use a spline to join them line. so that's why i had to use a curve fit so this is an example of something that is very complicated. If it is done by intern, I, I will suspect that it will be very difficult for the intern to build something so sophisticated. You just have, need to have a good idea. Once the good idea is there, then working with interns, I, I, I don't think it's difficult for us 
collectively as a community uh, to, to build some of these interactives. Okay, again, I'm just going to say uh, maybe uh, this last part, it, it can be very painless and, and possibly we can even DIY, it means do it ourselves or the temp staff can help us to edit. So this has an added advantage because if we were to give this out as a contract out to vendors, usually what happens is at the end of the contract, what happens? Cannot pay them means no work done, right? <laughs> then you got to pay somebody else to do the work, right? But with the sustainable uh, ecosystem, uh, we can actually take charge. We don't have to rely on other people to get out to meet our objective of creating world class interactives for students to use. Okay, so that, that's that's the crux. Okay, once this is done using a toolkit that we can change ourselves as officers, we can easily mentor the interns. We can easily tell the vendors to make the necessary changes because if they don't, then I can always give it to somebody else to make the change because the source code. Source code means is the um, is how it is built. Then you just recompile, and then it will be a new simulation. Then the source code is is always with us. Bubble coming up and and disappearing is all based on math and logic. Okay, we try to depict the representation as accurately as we can, and then many of the calculation to find best fit or spline curve can be done uh, by. You just have to point me to the mathematics equation. Then usually, okay, ChatGPT can can spin up the JavaScript function, and we can import it and and use it. So it's no longer that difficult now. But not 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 now. Then plus I'm here in CPDD, so it makes all the sense to harness and try to level up everybody and learn. Okay. Okay. This is another demonstration. Okay. When I when when I receive this piece. Interactive is is basically all the nice videos all done up all the videos all done up nicely. Then one day the CBDD officers came to talk to me and said, "Can you make it into an interactive using the video as the base?" So I find that actually it is possible. It takes it takes a while to figure out, but I think these are the kind of challenge that I I rather be be facing uh, rather than rather than try to tell the vendor how to do their work uh. So. Eventually, the idea is uh, this. Let's conduct a simple experiment to show that light travels in a straight line. So this is a video play in the background. The experiment. Okay. So now is where I'm supposed to click the center. I mean, I click on this, this part here. Click then it will progress. Fair board from the choice board to the metal slot of the wooden holder. Okay. So you might be wondering how am I doing this magic? It's, it's not magic. It's basically videos at the back and the interactive layers at, on top of it. So when you try to drag it, it's actually dragging the interactive layer. But when I release it, it starts to play the next video, as you can see from the, so the timing. Light from the flame. Okay. So I think the impression I want to give you... Does the light ray reach the eye? What does the eye see? Let me just Click play a bit more. Huh? Click yes or no to answer the questions based on what you observe. So the officer asked me, can we speed this up? All oh, this all can be done because it is all logic. It's not difficult for, for scientifically inclined officers to figure out. We just have to sit down, take some time, maybe mentor the intern to help us to script it. But because the intern script it in a in a particular way, we because we are using EJSS, I we can shape how the interns write the code. The code becomes readable to the officer, which in turn will lead on to many benefits. Because when this gets rolled out to SLS, teacher student will have feedback. They say this one too small, that one too big. Make it faster. All these requests no longer become. Let's wait for the next programming intern to come in. It will no longer be that kind of conversation. It will be, okay, let's look at it. Maybe there's somebody in the office study more computationally uh, skilled. You can just open a source code and just figure out how to make the necessary changes. So you can click yes, then there'll be a hand, you know, Great job. And, and move on. Click next to repeat the experiment with the second square board. 
Okay, I'm going back to the PowerPoint. So when I was doing this, I realized that it was difficult. Even for me, uh, I need to think uh, conceptually how to do it. Basically, I use an organizing schema called time to control the frame because these are all video clips. Uh, so I use time to control. Then I, I use the, I use provide a layer on top of the video to provide for the interactivity. And as I program, as I look through the, the so I don't have to write through, I don't have to program it uh, like using code editor. Then it becomes like one whole chunk of words, uh, thousands of times to look through. Uh. The UI, the user interface of EJSS allows me to very easily just pump in the variables. So in this case, you can see there's a video URL. So I just need to find, point the video to the correct location. Then when the video ends, I want it to do certain things, okay? And then I, I want it to be visible during this time. Also, this is greater than three, then it's lesser than four. So basically, EJSS has made it such that non-programmers, non-developers can actually decide how we want the animation or how the interactive to look like. Okay? So I just like to make a point that to expect the intern to do this, uh, if they are if they are not well trained, <laughs> it will be quite difficult. There are so many complicated parts. Okay. And the code is no longer a black box because now we, we know exactly what the interactive is doing. Okay. And then it's therefore possible that we can make the changes ourselves or with the intern's help. Okay. This is another interactive. Uh, it, it, this is a low. This is a not not a interactive interactive. This is a simple menu. Nice if the student can decide which interactive to go to. So, uh, being one of the new officers, so I I, I volunteered to help help lah. So I created a menu. So you just need to click on this, then it will bring to the correct uh simulation. Because the original design was the the student get to progress from one to another linearly. So I asked, I asked Timothy, hey, how come the design like that? How come it's so linear? Why aren't we all fascinated with this idea where students take charge of learning, they can be in control where to go to next. And so that's why I'm creating a menu. And you can see again, it is not a complicated design. It's basically just one text here and then several buttons. When you click on one button, there will be this text of which you change to scenario two and then followed by whatever words. The text is aligned left because alignment is difficult to control, but EJSS makes it easy. On release, that means when you click the button, on release, what you want it to do. So on release, I want it to do this JavaScript command called windows.open. Okay, so it, it's just, it's not difficult, difficult. It's just something that you can copy on the internet and then just find a way to make the button work. Okay, this is uh, this is where I try to sell some uh Koyo, <laughs> sell some uh some skill set that my colleague Andy has. Uh. And Andy has been a very nice colleague. Not only is he very nice, uh, he, has, he has actually shared with me interactive that he made for the chemistry A-level curriculum. And the things that he's done is, is fascinating. So he can actually make like equations uh, into functions and then he can use he can use HTML to build the interactives. Okay, so I just want to uh, give a shout out thanks to, to Andy because uh, he has made also a lot of interactive, deserves some airtime. You all also know that Andy is a person that you should buy coffee and, uh, and uh, you know, see whether you can learn an idea for interactive, then you should, you should Andy should be one of the first and, and me second, uh, then you talk to us and then see whether we can build this in-house using interns. Okay. Uh, so my colleagues also tell me, uh, you know, that you not just talk about EJSS, but also talk about how to use EJSS in SLS. So this is where I attempt to show you some of these MOE library resources that uses EJSS. Okay. So this is a physics example. Uh, you can go to this URL, then you can do a search of whatever you want, and then you can find the interactives. But I think in the interest of time, I will not demo that. But I just show you the resource that's inside SLS. Okay, this is an MOE library lesson. Our colleagues, he wanted this interactive where you know you can decide uh, what type of uh, 
what type of collision you want, okay? Whether it be some, these are physics concepts, right? just, just bear with me first. So then you can decide. Okay, so these are all designs uh, in, in computation. It's very difficult to have this up and down. Because the computer will just shoot up and then come back down immediately. So we have to use some, some thinking to make some kind of a delay so that it can show this concept of a, of a peak just like the real data logger okay so we can actually now we, we possess the ability now to show data that looks very much like the data logger so that the student experience with both the virtual lab and the data logger experience in in the real physics lab is comparable it will not be jutting out and then causing mental uh, discomfort like the student will be like how come i don't understand what's happening but actually the data representation is, is very similar. Okay, then after that, we can, we can design such that we can get students to write based on what they have done on the ex, uh, virtual lab. They can actually do some questions. Okay, these are true false with the answer. Okay, virtual lab is only good for exploration, but we need to design it with the questions to deepen the understanding. There are certain things you want the student to notice then you must design it in your SLS question as a, as a question. Then you force the student to re-look at the interactive and not just use the interactive like a play thing, you know, just something running past and then after that forget, but you actually get them to focus on it back again. Okay. I'm going back to the PowerPoint. Okay. So this is an example of something that uh, physics uh, colleagues have used EJSS already. So EJSS is not something that happened uh, this year. EJSS has been used in SLS since SLS was alive. This is another example. So again, he strings the SLS MOE library lesson with a series of questions, but he doesn't want the student to interact with it. He wants, in fact, the students to observe the, the, the phenomena. So he actually did an animated GIF. Then after that, from the animated GIF, then he asked the questions, you know. So this kind of design is also appropriate and possible with EJSS. Okay. So in the end, I think you might be wondering where is the simulation in the end? So of course, we won't put the simulation to waste. We probably will put it at the back. You know, something where the student can, can try on, on their own. Okay, then you can, you can click on it and then you can play with it. Then once you mouse over, there will be certain data that appears. Okay. Now it's, it's very easy because it's a linear... It's a straight line, uh, but once things get harder with the acceleration, okay, then you can see that there is meaning in getting students to observe the gradient because the gradient actually changes. So this is already in MOE library, EJSS. Okay. How about in community gallery? Uh, I just give credit to Xenia because Xenia came to ETD and then she was attached to me for, for 14 days. Then she gave this idea to me la, that how nice if she can make her own interactive. So this is a this is an interactive as a practice tool. So her idea is you get students to click on these numbers to change the visualization of the molecules. And then eventually the student can also select here and then they can check. If the student get it wrong, they can actually click on the hint and the hint will show the missing molecule. I must give credit to Xenia because this was done in a very short time. I mean, she may have the idea uh, for a long, long time, la, but when she came to me, it was just basically talking through, just explaining. Then as we come up with version one, then she said, how nice if this version two can do this, then version two appears because I give her a snippet of the code and then I asked her to replicate it. So she being a diligent, a hardworking student, she will replicate the code and then she, in, in the end, uh, this is a simulation produced by her. I, I only teach her how to do it. Okay, so sometimes um, you may see things like this, very common, uh, a diagram, you know, things like that. Then I have to ask the student to go and figure out what is the shadow cast on the screen based on this torchlight and this object. So I was thinking science can, shouldn't be like this. Uh, so I thought, how nice if I have an interactive that now I can, I can let's say I can choose the light. I can decide how the, the light changes. I can even change the shape of the object. 
and then I can change the direction so I can see, oh, this is how it actually looks like. Then all the concept become alive. It's no longer a dead piece of paper, <laughs> you know, and then uh, we can also change the shape, the, the sphere, the exact position of the sphere, and then the, the size of the, the circle. Okay, and then if you want to change the position of the screen nearer, further, these are all scripted using logic. And the computation, the calculation of the shadow is, is based on mathematics rules. Okay, so this is what I did. See, community gallery chip admin. Okay. Okay, so this one is another uh, example. I worked with CBDD uh, that time, uh, two years back. I think it was with the math uh, specialist. Uh, she had this idea about a rolling dice game. Uh, so it was basically a very uh, pen and paper thing. So she said, uh, Lawrence, if you can help make us interactive that can do all these nice things as, as if it was done on paper. So of course, the paper experience doesn't disappear. Primary one, and they had no nothing. So, so I understand hands on skills play a very key role in learning. But how nice uh, if in SLS the student can re really experience the. Okay, so lastly, what is the value proposition of uh, each SLS? So, um, first and foremost, being students at, at the center of whatever we do, simulation is just one of the little things that we, we try to create world class interactives for the students that the display of information uh, that is suitable for the student learning is all presented in the simulation because we decide what to show. As opposed to those similar simulation that you find on the internet, probably it's done by some professor, you know, it will have some harder concept, maybe it's in pound. I mean, I, I do not, I'm just making things up, but you get the drift. The interactives typically designed for their targeted audience. And then when we try to use it for the Singapore local context, the student in our classroom will have to struggle with all these extra buttons, extra words. So if we design it, typically we can reduce it to a level where the student can very quickly get the concept from the uh, interactives. Okay, Interactives are also very good for exploration and experimentation. I think most of you would have already known that these radio buttons and, and sliders, they do allow the the students to use it and then they actually become more critical. They, they look at it and it's, at least they will say things like, oh, now I know what the physics is about huh? because, you know, oh, now I understand because again, they can interact, they can decide a value, a velocity, they can decide and the thing launch out of, does it launch out of the earth's surface or does it back, fly back down? Then all this concept no longer is like a, like a movie. It's like I got to rely on my past knowledge or what I saw on on a movie clips uh, and then try to figure out what is the teacher talking about. Now all these become real things that they can they can they can have a handle on uh, and then ask ask questions. What if what if I think this is also a, a very key point uh customization and flexibility. One interactive that I made on the clock okay I took from a, a Taiwan professor uh one interactive that he built I can actually redesign uh, into so many because every SLS lesson uh, will, will ask the student in a different way. Some I will ask the student to tell time using only the analog and the digital. I want to see this also in a digital form. I want to tell time to the nearest five minutes. That means it will snap to the five minutes. It will not show uh, 41 minutes. It will show either 40 or 45 minutes. So these are the customization uh, that will maybe make uh, was make EJSS stand out. Uh, okay, this is a this is an idea about the evolving global development because uh, some of you may when if you interact with me and then you may have already figured out that actually uh, EJSS have data aware uh, simulations now. Uh, what I mean by that is if the student were to do something on the interactives. Not only can we show them all the logs, okay, we can actually at the back end collect all the data of whether the student uh, moved the question six to what coordinate. So this is X and Y. So it moved down and uh, left, you know. So eventually the student will, will get the answer correct. 
Uh, but with this, then it, it provides me a glimpse of how the student had been performing on my simulation without the need for me to go around, look at him. Hey, can you please, student A, can you please repeat what you have done on the screen? I, I noticed you didn't get the answer correct. So all this can be eliminated. Straight away, I can go to the student and say, hey, you did this, you did that, correct? And then you can move and proceed on to your skillful teaching. You can do your uh, asking question and all that. I just like to uh, tell you that uh, these two marks is green color. Okay, we we have decided like, after several iterations, two marks is for getting it correct the first time. Uh, one mark is for getting it correct in later times. Okay, so this is the 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 data that you see. Why am I bringing this up? Is because suddenly yeah, uh, in the EJSS com global community yeah, uh, somebody developed something whatever or maybe can make into an app or whatever suddenly this capability is now available to us because we use we are using ejss in singapore we network with the, the the professor and then we can probably all these are all open source code we can easily port it over to the singapore context okay so it it becomes we we get to benefit uh, uh, from other people's development uh, at zero dollars we can actually benefit from other people's development in uh, in the global community so that's why it is worth doing uh, these EJSS simulations. Okay, is it cost effective? Uh, I, I think EJSS is an open source software. It's freely available. It's been used by professors, uh, the educators around the world for 20 years. Already. So for the past seven years, it has been able to generate JavaScript, which then makes it very nice for SLS because SLS only takes uh, JavaScript okay, for it to run. This is a question that, that everybody likes to ask. Lawrence, what, what about all this interactive that you make? Huh? Does it belong to MOE? Okay. So actually, because EJSS is a, is a global community of users, so actually it is no, not that uh, difficult to attribute. You, all you need to do is just attribute. You have, if you have seen all the copyright emails that LinkedIn has been sending, Creative Commons has been mentioned several times. This interactive are in the license the same way. So yes, it's not all rights MOE, but I don't see a problem in attributing the professor's name and not selling it. And then maybe share one of the earlier versions that you have made in the internet for, for the global community to benefit from. I, I don't see a problem uh, in that sense because we are in a ministry to help people to learn if People find that by changing the source code, they learn something. They want to adapt it for their own country's uh, curriculum. I don't see a major problem. With okay, so these are the community uh, development approaches. So all these professors and, and myself here, we are working together to make EGSS a better toolkit for everyone. So in a nutshell, I just like to conclude by saying that if you have temp staff, you have uh, external content provider, you have vendors, I encourage you to think strongly about using EJSS as the toolkit to build the, the interactives. Because once they are built using EJSS, they are usually scientific, high quality, and future ready with the source code. People like Andy, myself, Fang Fang, Darren Tan, we, we can change, make small changes to the source code and then we can publish it back to SLS and then the student will benefit from the new version of the interactives. Okay, these are some of the references. If you're interested, you can look at this uh, toolkit to download it. This is a, a hackathon a tutorial that uh, some of us made to mentor a group of teachers to make their own games. This one is interesting. Click on this link, then you will find all the 119 EJSS added to the community gallery. Click on this, you will find all the 41 EJSS that have been added to the MOE library by CBDD officers. Okay, I think with that, uh, thank you very much.